Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and this is tutorial number 50. And can I just take a moment to say, wow, 50 tutorials in this series so far. This is crazy. Um, and if you guys can remember, my old series on HTML, HTML elements was actually only 47. So I've definitely included a little bit more content in here which has made the series a little bit longer and that is exactly the purpose why I decided to reboot the series. But enough about that, uh, let's go on and talk about what we're really here to do and that is talk about the labels and field sets, okay? So I'm gonna start off with field sets and you guys will notice that I have already got some um, form elements in my form Okay, so I'm not starting from scratch in this tutorial, but uh, what I did here was just um, put in a personal info um, information where I asked the user for their first name and their last name, and there's an input element of type text for both of those, and then I've given up, put up a hobby section where they can choose between sport, gaming, art, and acting as a hobby. Okay, so... Um, if I were to run this in Firefox right now, this is pretty much what I get, the word personal info, um, and then they can fill in a first name, a last name, and pick a hobby, okay? And then they can click Submit. But now, um, the reason why I grouped everything like this is because I want personal info to be under one big group. And the way I can do that is by using a field set okay so what I'm gonna do is um, just surround this entire block over here with a field set tag and I'm gonna start that off over here so field set and I'm gonna end that off uh, just before that break tag actually so uh, field set okay I'm gonna actually have to end that off so I need my closing slash so now I actually have a field set and I can indent all of that so that I know it uh, all belongs in, in this field set. Um, the next thing I want to do is actually just change this personal info uh, tag over here or label because I don't want that just to be plain text with the break tag on the end. I would much rather prefer that to be a legend, okay? Because whenever you're using a field set, you can use a legend to um, determine what data needs to go inside of uh, that field set. So in other words, this legend is basically like a header, but it doesn't get bolded. Um, and if I go back and I click refresh over here, you can see I now have uh, one field set, which has made a border go all the way around um, our elements over here. and the legend appears in the top of this field set. So in other words, the legend um, is kind of like a header, but not really because it's not bold and it's not big. But, uh, you know, it kind of just tells you what information needs to be filled in in this block. Okay. And we can do the same thing over here with our hobbies. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just um, get that field set tag over there and that one over there. Oopsie. <laughs> I pasted instead of copied. Okay, so copy and paste. And let's just send all of that forward. And I'm also going to change that um, from that to hobbies. Okay, and now we've got another field set. Um, appearing with our checkboxes and our checkboxes appear in this hobbies field set. So this is nice for um, you know just organizing your form if you want it to look a lot more tidy then you can go ahead and add in a field set or a bunch of field sets and instantly it looks a lot uh, more tidy it just looks a lot easier to read and then you can use CSS later on to actually style that this and just improve upon the looks and just make it even better uh, looking. 
Okay, so now we can go ahead and actually start talking about labels, which I have uh, left for last. And as you can see uh, right now, I am already using labels next to my um, elements over here, but I didn't include them in label tags. So you would have noticed over the past couple of videos that I just didn't put any tags around the words in front of my input elements okay um, so it would probably be better if I surrounded them in a label tag just like this label and ending label okay and uh, a normal label tag just like that won't make any visual changes so right now you can see I've got my first name uh, this word first name surrounded by label tags uh, uh, but if I've saved that and refreshed it in Firefox you can see nothing changes visually okay so this name or this first name the word first name did not change okay but it is useful to um, have this word first name surrounded by those label tags because we can use that uh, label tag later on and style it to be exactly the same size so all our labels will be the same size and therefore um, it'll make our form look a lot more tidy again because if you take a look uh, at this form now I'm going to zoom in you can see that this uh, text element is slightly in front of uh, this uh, text element and that's kind of annoying that they don't line up um, it would lo obviously look a little bit more tidy if they lined up um, so uh, we can go ahead and use CSS to style those label attributes or label tags um, but I'm gonna do that in the next video so if you guys wanna see that then come back for the next video but we're not finished yet because there's still another attribute that I want to talk about that goes in this label tag um, but for now let's go ahead and just uh, place all of our uh, <laughs> labels into actual label tags so I'm just gonna copy this and try paste everything as fast as I can so that is not supposed to be there that was a mistake <laughs> whoops uh, get rid of that and start pasting in here again and here okay save that again <laughs> Uh, and like I said, it doesn't make any visual changes, um, so I don't need to refresh this in Firefox just yet. But what I do want to talk to you guys about is an attribute for our label tag, which is actually called for, F-O-R. And what this attribute does is it will link our label to whatever element this label was meant to be linked to. Uh, so right now um, this first name label should be linked to this input element with the name of first name okay and the way we can actually link these two uh, tags is if I put in some information in this for attribute so I'm going to say that this is for first name but whenever I do this I have to link to the ID of this input element and right now we don't actually have an ID so I'm gonna have to go ahead and put that ID in and I'm gonna put the ID of first name into here and uh, don't worry that this has a name of first name and an ID of first name that's okay because the name is what gets sent through on the back when the um, on the URL or in the post data whenever um, this form is submitted but uh, the ID is more for in browser stuff so um, they can be both the same it doesn't matter um, they're intended for different purposes okay and uh, what I'm gonna do is carry on just adding the four attributes to the rest of these elements so I'm gonna pause the recording right here okay so I'm back and you guys should see quite a few changes what I did was I just added this four attribute into every one of my labels and I gave all of my elements an ID 
And then I also noticed that I forgot to give each one of these check boxes over here a name. So I just went ahead and added all those names in as well. So you will notice <laughs> that difference in the um, pause between the, the pause. Um, so anyway, let's go back to Firefox now and click refresh. And as you can see, having that label didn't change any visual appearance. But uh, let's take a look at what happens when I click on this label now. So uh, when I click on first name now, you can see that my cursor gets focused in onto this um, text element here and actually I can start typing. And if I uh, backspace and I uh, go out of that, let me click on the label sport. And as you can see now that I've clicked on that, my checkbox for sport got ticked. Same thing with gaming and art and acting. Uh, and what happens um, and why that happens, sorry, is because we've got this for attribute in our label. Okay, let's say I were to take this for attribute out of art or and acting. Um, so let's go ahead and save that now. Come back here, uh, click refresh and maybe actually just run this in Firefox brand new so uh, everything is not ticked. Uh, now what happens is this art label and this acting label don't have um, that for attribute inside of them as you can see. So uh, I'm clicking on this label and nothing's happening. But let's go over to gaming which does have the for attribute and as you can see I can click on the label and the uh, checkbox gets checked. Okay, so that's one nice feature about having a label is when you're using that for attribute, um, the user can click on the f uh, label itself and get centered in onto the element that it was meant for. And uh, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. So don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment, like or share this video. It's really going to help my channel grow. And I will see you guys next time.